Okay, in this video we're looking at hypothesis testing again, but we're looking at the one sample t test in this video. So, you know, we went through a long discussion breaking down every little individual step of hypothesis testing. We have those steps listed here. Um, I just want to point out that for uh, the t test, not much changes actually. It's almost the same exact procedure. We just want to talk about um, what does change and how you handle those changes. So, of course, Essentially, you could say that every one of these steps remains the same in name. The thing that changes primarily is going to be this step, step three, and this step, step four. That's the only change. Well, that's not true, I guess. You'll also have a change in step five as well. So, but the remaining steps remain the same. And even though I'm listing three of them here as changing, they don't change really in a significant way. There's just a kind of slight variation there which you have to watch out for. So let's talk about the data step, what's going to happen there. When you collect the data after identifying your claim, getting your HO and HA, what you'll see in the data step is that either one or two things are going to happen to you uh, depending on which class you're dealing with. If you were in my class, for example, in my class I teach that when the sample size is small, so when n is less than 30, we go ahead and we use the T hypothesis testing method as opposed to the Z method that we learned earlier. So we're going to use a t-test whenever the sample size is small, and we have this assumption of um, normality in the problem. All right, now, in your case, though, if you're in a different class, you might actually have a different rule. You might actually have the rule that says that you use the uh, t-test app when sigma is unknown. But you're still assuming normally distributed. So sigma is unknown, but you're still assuming that the data has a bell-shaped distribution. In that case, um, you would use this t-test procedure. So generally speaking, all, camp, all classrooms around the country or the world generally use one of these two rules. Either when the sample size is small, they use t, or when the population standard deviation is unknown, so instead you have s instead of this sigma value, then you use the t-test. Both of these assume that there is normality in the problem, though the data is normally distributed, though. So in order to be able to uh, use these procedures, you would generally be assuming that the uh, population is bell-shaped in nature. Because remember, the T um, curve is basically bell-shaped looking. Okay, so that's the difference in the data step. You know, normally, like for example, my students, when they run across a problem, normally the sample size is larger than 30, so they can use the Z test. When it isn't larger than 30, they must use the T procedure. And in other classes, um, they get to the data step, they either see the population standard deviation and move on and do the Z test, or they see this and use the T test, all right? Okay, so this is the conditions where you would apply the T test. All right, so once you see that in the data step, there's nothing really new about that anymore. The rest is the same. You collect the same items. You have a sample size, you have a sample mean, you have a standard deviation of some sort, and you usually have a significance level, so not much changes there. Now we look at this step here, step four. What changes about that? almost nothing except for notation, really. The test stat formula becomes this. It'll be t now, because we're going to be dealing with a t-test. It'll be x bar minus mu sub zero, which is the same as it was before. But now we have down below s divided by the square root of n. So s here indicates that we don't know the population standard deviation. But um, you know, basically, the sample standard deviation goes in as a replacement. Since it's you know, the same type of thing as the population standard deviation is still trying to measure the same idea, um, we essentially don't see much change here. So the test stat is, is basically identical. All right, and then from there, we do step five. And that's where, I guess, a fairly significant change occurs. Um, what you deal with in step five that changes is that when you go to get the critical value from your table, you first of all will not use a z-table anymore, you'll have to use a t-table to do this. So we go to the t-table, and of course inherent in a t-table is the concept of degrees of freedom. So you'll need to look up your item by the degrees of freedom. So remember degrees of freedom is n minus 1, so you look up your alpha in the appropriate number of tails under the appropriate degrees of freedom. So you will look up, look up alpha in the appropriate number of tails with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And that's really the only significant change there. You're still getting a critical value, and you just have to 
not go straight to the bottom of the t table to get a z score. You stop somewhere short of that where your degrees of freedom are located. And alpha will either be in one tails or two tails, depending on the hypothesis test that you're conducting, right? Whether it's a left tail or right tail test or a two tail test. So other than that, that's it. You still use the same initial conclusion procedure and final conclusion procedure. So I would say that the t-test is very similar. If you're good at the z-test, you'll be good at this as well. The, way, the main reason why people miss these questions on a test is that um, they forget to take into consideration that you're dealing with the t-test. Um, and that is back here at the data step. Remember, you're looking for a small sample size in some classes, depending on how your professor does it, or you're looking at the idea that you have this sample standard deviation instead of the population standard deviation. Um, in my classes, they just have to look at the small sample size. If they see a sample size under 30, they go ahead and use the t-test. All right, and that's it. Other than that, the rest of the procedure should be the same. When you look at the practice problems that we covered in the videos, you'll see that it's um, pretty simple to do.